If you're like many people, you may find that science just seems to be really hard to study. And so today I want to walk you through basically how to study science and why it may seem really difficult to be able to study it and some mistakes that are often made whenever you're trying to study science. If you don't know me, I am Dr. Elena Reister. I have a PhD in chemistry. The first step you want to take whenever you're trying to study something in science, and this isn't like largely you're trying to study a whole unit in science, but each individual part is asking the question, does this need to be memorized or is this a process that I need to learn? I think a lot of people kind of take the memorization things and try and apply processes to it, which can be very difficult to do, or they take a process and simply try to memorize it instead of understanding that process. So for example, if you were in chemistry and say you're learning the ideal gas law, so PV equals NRT, knowing what the constant, so what R is, knowing the equation, so knowing PV equals NRT, are things that either need to be memorized or you need to be able to have access to that information. That's really all memorization is, is giving you access to that information during a place where you can't get access from it otherwhere. You're getting access to it from your brain alone. So really your question is, do you need access to information or do you need to know how to use that information? The process part of learning the ideal gas law is knowing that if you're given several different variables, how do you solve for a new variable? And how do you convert one variable to another to know which units you put into the ideal gas law? So even one question can actually have two components of it. It can have a memorization component and it can have a process component. And so if you're only focused on the process component and you actually need to know the equations and stuff like that, you're actually not going to be able to complete the process unless you memorize the equations. And if you only memorize the equations, but you're not comfortable actually putting those equations into practice, then you don't know the process part of it. You really need both parts to actually be successful in what you're studying. Now, on the other side of it, if you're studying something like biology and you're learning the four chambers of the heart or what different muscles do or where the different parts of the brain are and what they do, that's almost entirely memorization. So you want to apply tactics that are going to help you memorize those facts so that you have access to them during your exam. So the second part is let's talk about memorization. What are different things that can help you with memorization? And one of the biggest mistakes I think a lot of students make is thinking that studying is simply going over material. And so a lot of people will do essentially passive study techniques. They'll read their notes, they'll read a textbook, they'll watch videos. The biggest issue with this is that the only way to measure how successful you're being is in time. How much time or how many pages have you read? Even if you've spent a lot of time doing something, that doesn't actually mean that you know more of it than you would have if you have spent less time. So what you want to focus on is active studying techniques and active recall techniques. So instead of simply reading something multiple times, you actually want to take action to figure out how much of that are you actually retaining. So things like this that are really good are study guides that I make that separate out what is the important information I need to learn from something that includes a lot of extraneous information. Whenever I was studying for science test, I almost always made a study guide for the information I needed to memorize. So that's part of that above where you're separating out your memorization from your processes. If it was something that needed to be memorized, it went on my study guide. And then I could use active recall techniques to actually learn what was on my study guide. So I would take a first pass at my study guide. I would often spend time saying the thing three times in my head to try and like remember it. And then I would go into active recall. So I would put away the answers. And you can either do this with having another person using your study guide and asking you the questions for the information. Or you can do this with using something like building a quiz for yourself or even flashcards where you then have to guess what you know. You have to try and remember what you actually know instead of being able to just read and then you don't really know what you have actually remembered. And so what you can do, you can try and guess what you know. You're going to get some wrong. Then what you do is you mark those as wrong in some way. 
And so once you've gone through all of it, then you go back and look at the ones that you've gotten wrong and study those again. And so usually it takes me about three to five passes of active recall to be able to consistently get them right. Now, whenever I'm re-going through it again, I don't only do the ones that I missed. I also do the ones that I got right the first time because even within a few minutes of memorizing something, you can forget it again. So just because I knew it on the first time I did active recall, I still need to reanalyze if I still know that fact. And so that's a way that I've been able to successfully study the memorization part of what I need to be successful in science. What's really nice about this is once you're consistently getting 100% active recall, then you know that you're done studying the memorization part. What's really good about this is if you have your main study session a couple days before the exam where you've scored 100, you end that study session, and then the nights leading up to the exam, you just do it once or twice. You're mainly just doing the active recall part. If you get 100% on your first time, good. If not, it only takes you about 15 minutes to keep that information in your head. This is also really helpful for remembering it past the exam as well. This allows you to have more confidence when you go into an exam because you actually know you've already tested yourself. So it's not like, did my studying work? You know when your studying worked and you know when to stop studying because you've already mastered what you're trying to do. Now, the second component is the process component of science. So just because you memorize things, doesn't mean you're actually going to be able to do the process component of science. And I think this is the part that's really hard for a lot of people who maybe really excel at history or really good at memorizing, but aren't really good at the process component. And while I might do a video later that specifically focuses on the process component and exactly how to solve any science problem, what I want to talk about is techniques for studying how to solve a process. So whenever you're solving a process, generally this is going to be a problem that you're given. It could be a word problem. It could just be, you know, some variables that you have to solve or something like that. And so what you need to do is the first step is to try a problem. Look at a problem, assuming that you've already been to class, take a practice problem, whether you get it from a textbook or online or something like that. Take a practice problem of that nature and try and work through it. If you don't even know how to get started, A good idea is to go and try and find a YouTube video or review your class notes or something like that to remember the process again. Look through it and even work through a practice problem with someone else kind of walking you through it. The next time you're going to take another practice problem and you're going to restart without any of your notes around and try and get started and then figure out when you're you're getting stuck. Whenever you're getting stuck, go and look for the solution to how you get stuck. And then you're going to try from there to work most of it on your own with only going back and referencing as you need when you get stuck. Eventually, you want to keep working this till you can do about one to two practice problems without any assistance. You don't need to look at any of your notes just like you would be on the exam. So even if you've looked at a lot of practice problems of other people doing it, until you're actually doing it yourself, and until you can get to the point where you can look at a practice problem and you can actually solve it completely yourself, you don't know that you're actually going to be able to do that in an exam. So being able to actively work through a problem and actually get to a solution gives you the confidence that you can actually go sit in an exam and work on it. Now, a big part of this and something that's really helpful is working first on the memorization of what you need and then on the process. Because if you've already memorized it, instead of having to continually reference it, you're also constantly testing that active recall. Can you pull those constants out or those equations out as you need while you're working through your process that you're trying to learn as well? Ultimately, through using this type of system, you're not having to spend 14, 15 hours studying for exam, you're probably going to shorten it up only to a few hours studying for an exam, but you're more likely to perform better because you're actually testing yourself along the way instead of simply trying to consume more and more information. This has been my number one way that I have studied for almost all of my exams, and it's been really helpful because I haven't spent as much time as a lot of my colleagues and other students But I've had more confidence going into my exam because I've already essentially created a test for myself and taken it and passed it. And that's how I know when I'm done studying 
instead of just saying, I'm going to study all night so that I can try and get this information in my brain. If this information was really helpful, I will leave a few videos up here for if you're trying to get started in research, specifically in the sciences, to help you be able to come up with your ideas and start working on your own research projects as well. And I hope that this has been helpful in getting you to be able to study for your science exams and be able to make better grades and do it more confidently. I hope to see you in the next video.